All right, guys. Just, just to open it up, I know everyone saw the news, heard the news about Verrett, but it's just uh, unfortunate, devastating injury for him and for us. You know, we all feel for JV. We know the work that he's put in to, to come back. And, uh, you know, we're all saddened by what happened to him. But JV is an unbelievable person, unbelievable leader. And he's been for us. He's been tremendous, like leading these young guys and giving us everything he's had. So it's just an unfortunate thing. But our pro praying for JV that he's able to, you know, bounce back and recover. He's been through it before. We know he will. He's a strong man. Uh, so we're all, all our thoughts are with him at this time because we know how difficult it is, you know, for him. And we know how hard, how much work he put in, how much, you know, how dedicated he was to coming back and helping his team. So uh, it's definitely hurt for us. But uh, we'll, the guys are with him and the guys around him will pick up the slack and be ready to roll. How did, how did he get hurt? No, uh, just non contact, yep. Yeah. How close was he to probably playing on Sunday? Were you expecting him to debut? Uh, we're still working through it to see where he would be by the end of the week. So just as he's been in the past, it's been giving him time to just work back into it. He has such a big presence in the, in the locker room. What's the mood like? What was the mood like uh, at practice? Day? Yeah, as, as you guys would expect, it's a somber mood because all those guys seeing, you know, seeing him working on the side, seeing him being back out there and the energy that he brought to the team, just him being back out there working, everybody seeing him work. You know, it was uh, definitely uplifting for the entire team to see him. So when you see him go down, it's just a, a somber mood for everyone, you know, coaches, players, everyone, you know. Our support staff, everyone just feels for him. What does it do to the cornerback room just mentally because you've suffered a number of big injuries this season in that room? Yeah, and the thing with injuries are, you know, they are tough, and but it, it happens to everyone in this league. So the, for that room, guys just understand the position they're in. It doesn't change. You're always competing to be your best. You're always competing with yourself. And guys just have to continue to, to do that. Guys don't have to do anything different. They have to just continue to hone their skills, work their techniques, and be, be the best, at, give us the best that they can give us. In the cornerback room, you talk about how Jason is kind of a pseudo coach in there. What are some, who are some of the young guys he's especially given tips to and encouragement? Yeah, I mean, just watching him throughout the years, just the way he worked with E-Man, you know, throughout his time here, you see the development of E-Man and all these, the younger guys just, I think, just pouring into him, whether it's safeties, him talking to Jimmy, talking to Huff, it's just all the guys, not any one guy in particular, but just all those guys. When he talks, all the guys listen. The last time he went through this, that he almost retired, was he close to doing that again after week one last year? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't answer that for you, though. Be a question for him. You had um, Warren Burks step in last week and or two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, Honda played every single snap after you know being on special teams, I, and I assume that uh, if, if Drake Greenlaw is back and if Al Shire is back, he'll go go back to special teams. But how big is that to, for him to be able to do that and produce in case he's needed down the road? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's where guys, you know, you get your opportunity in this league. You never know when it's going to come. So are you ready, right? You don't know until you're thrust into that moment, into that position. And Oren, he stepped in and he did a good job for us, played the entire game, made some big plays for us. And he stepped up and did what he was supposed to do for the team. And you know, whatever his role is, the, the great part about Oren, he's a smart guy who's always ready to step in and help out at any one of those, either one of those linebacker positions. So proud of the way he stepped in for us and, you know, made some big time plays for us. What kind of, has Deshaun Gibson, since he got here, exceeded your expectations? I mean, watching watching Gip, you know, you always seen that he's been a he's been a starter in this league. He's been a, a top player in this league. So he didn't I don't know he didn't exceed my expectations, but he's been everything we could have hoped for. You know, to get a guy that late and just his the ease of just transition, him coming into our scheme. You know, very smart guy, picked up on it very well, and not only just smart, but a a good player, right? He's made, made a lot of plays for us, you know, coming out of the post, making some really nice tackles for us. And he's just, he's been a calming force in that back end for us. And so I'm proud of Gip and happy that we were able to get him when we able to, when we when we got him because normally you don't find, 
you know, good players during that time. Do you know what? Have you heard any guesses why he was unemployed in mid-August? No, get, not sure why, but I'm, I'm happy he was. <laughs> He's employed now. That's all that matters. <laughs> you know, what, what kind of progress is Drake Jackson made, and, and what's his state of readiness if, if Samson can't go for, for a bigger role? Yeah, Drake has been progressing each week. You know, I've seen Drake be better and better each week. So Drake has to just continue to do what he's been doing, man. I'm happy with where he's headed. He's been doing some really good things for us. And, you know, I think he'll continue to get better with the more reps that he's given. He'll continue to get better and make plays for us. So happy with where he is. Can you just speak to the Chargers front line? They've surrendered the least amount of sacks in the NFL so far. Yeah. Yeah, the Chargers, with, I think, with them surrendering the least amount of sacks, I think it's uh, in part because of the quarterback play. Right? Herbert is a very, very talented quarterback. Uh, he does a good job of getting the ball out very quickly, going through his progressions, and the accuracy is, is really good. This guy is one of the top quarterbacks in his league. You talk about the movement skills in the pocket and being able to make any throw on the field. I think that's part of the reason why those guys don't have to block for long because he's making smart decisions with the football. Far you go back when you're watching film of the opposing team, but he had a pretty severe rib injury that he played through, and there, the feeling down there, or there is, is that he's just about back to being normal again. Can you see that, can, or can you see that he was impaired a little bit on older film? Oh, for sure. You can see, you know, that rib injury. If anybody's going through it, it's it's tough, and you definitely want, don't want to take more hits. So you see. His game changed a little bit. You see him getting the ball down to the check downs a lot more, getting the ball out even faster. But you see him this last week start to move around. He can still move in the pocket, athletic guy, big guy. He can move around and make plays on the move. So he's a very dangerous guy that we have to be, you know, we have to be on our toes, have to be ready for him. Eckler is such a dangerous player as both a big play threat, but also has that check down option too for Herbert. Yeah, I think Austin, he's a guy, if you watch their offense, he's a guy that's watching it. He's a guy that is trustworthy, right? It seems like a guy they can count on, whether it's running the ball, catching the ball in the check downs and gaining positive yards, right? He gets a lot of catches because it seems like the quarterback can trust him. And uh, he does he does good things with the ball in his hand. So all around tough player, whether it's blocking, running the ball, catching the check downs or screens. I right, really respect Austin and what he's done for himself in his league. You know, he's he's a really really good player. The only running back who's had any like receiving success is Christian McCaffrey against you guys. How can he help you guys as far as? inside the building, kind of how to slow down one of those versatile kind of quarterbacks? Well, I think everybody is, every guy is his own guy. So I don't put, you know, Austin in that category with Christian. We had our, you know, happy he's on our side now. We don't have to deal with him anymore. But, uh, you know, Austin poses a, a different set of problems. So uh, both good players. How are Aziz and Dre progressing back, and how much can they help stop Austin? Yeah, I mean, we would love to have those guys back, right, when you were able to get two of our top players back in the middle of our defense, you know, it's just so many things that they can stop, right, with their speed, their athleticism, their physicality that, it, that they bring to our defense, right? They are they are who they they are our defense. They are they symbol everything I ask for in our defense, whether we talk about speed, physicality, like those two guys show up and make plays for us all over the field. So hoping we can get those guys back because they can help passing game, run game, they play sideline to sideline. So Aziz and Dre are you know, really two good players that we love to have back. That's good. All right, thank you. Hi. Um, I was saying last week that having a uh, tailback with speed like Christian, especially in the outside zone, really helps him out as a blocker because it gets his opponent, that edge defender, moving and, you know, uh, Momentum and Jewish can take advantage of that. Is, is that true for you know the offensive linemen as well? Is that that speed sort of gets everybody going uh, on the hook. Yeah, it's it's definitely helps, you know, and, and all the backs have good speed. It does if you can press the edge. Obviously, the more you threaten the defense, the more the defense moves. George talked about it a lot that. That that threat of getting outside, that guy that George is blocking it for a minute thinks maybe this ball is going outside of me, so he moves a little more, which allows 
George then to move him that extra little bit, which may open up a running lane for the runner. Uh, but I think everybody in general, when the, the speed of the back pressing his landmark, doing what he's supposed to do in our run game, whatever the run is, it does make the defense have to react and do what they have to do a little bit faster, which then maybe we can get them to move and we can do what we want to do from that point. So it does help. Have you been impressed with the way Christian's been able to run that play? I don't know how much he did it prior to coming here. And, and how is he and, and both Elijah at kind of pressing the edge. On Those the guys side. are outstanding. I, I, Christian and, and Elijah both do a great job of understanding the run, understanding what they need to do to affect the defense in the run, what their read is, what, whether it's what landmark they're supposed to press, understanding the defense in front of them and how they how this play is going to play out versus the defense as well and helping the blockers and set up the blocks. Both these guys are outstanding. The other guys were good as well. They just really have a knack for it. Christian, natural runner in every every way, shape, or form. He's run some of this. I don't think he's ever been an offense that emphasized maybe some of the plays that we do, but he's run all of them and, and understands all of them and really is a real student and sets up blocks excellently and, and does some really good things. I'm not sure many... Um, on our touchdown run, there was a, a little bit of a communication thing, and it was it was very congested on his on his one the short one yard run, and he just had the patience to wait it out, and then the hole showed up and he got in the end zone. So it was it was a nice run by him. How's, how's Elijah looked this week? Uh, so far, so good. Everything looks good. He's out there working and, and seems to be in good shape. In general, with with the, the zone blocking, I mean, I'm sure it's something that. The longer you're, you're in the league and the longer you practice it, the better you are at it like everything else. But how has your line, your inexperienced line, done with that? Have you seen progress over the first eight games? We have, and, and I think we've shared and we've talked about it in here before how the game reps are so valuable. And when you start running them in the game, then they start seeing the value of what you talk about in practice. When you get a full speed rep and you're like, oh, now I see coach has been emphasizing this point, but maybe you haven't felt it quite because the practice just doesn't play out like that. So I think with each week, if we continue to be able to run it, uh, the guys do understand it a little better. And there's a point of reference for young players that, that haven't been through it before. When you have the veteran players like Mike and Trent who have done it before, you can reference, or even Dan Brunsko, you can reference things, hey, remember last year, remember this? Hey, we've talked about this before. Oh yeah, it jogs their memory and they're right back into it. The young guys haven't experienced this before. So continuing to practice the same things over and over, give them the reps in practice and then getting them called in the games, which Kyle's done a great job of, allows these guys to, to make those improvements in every area. And so we've been able to see, you know, gradual improvement as we've gone through the year with those guys. They've uh, given up a lot of uh, big plays that the Chargers have against the uh, teams that have been able to run on them for a lot of yards and a lot of big plays. Is there a danger in looking too hard at that and seeing oh, that's the target right there? Yeah, you just, you know, as always, you study a defense and you look at, at what, what you can do against that defense. And you look at your matchups and things that you think will be good. Um, it's always a danger to think anything is that big of a strength or that big of a weakness. Just as like we've talked about before, we've talked about a great player like Aaron Donald. You have to be aware of him, but you can't be paralyzed, but you have to be aware, right? You see that they do certain things, certain things that, that they've maybe struggled with. Maybe that's the point of emphasis this week that they shore up. And so you can't count on that still being that. You, you have to always, I think, I know as, a, as an offensive coach, if you have a weak spot, you know that everybody's going to see it. They're going to try to exploit it. And so you have to do everything you can to fix that, right? So it doesn't stay a weak spot. So there, there's always a danger in thinking anything's going to continue to be any certain way. But you have to evaluate the defense, evaluate what they do, uh, see what, what you want to do, how you want to attack it. And what that looks like every week is always a little bit different. And uh, so what they've given up, what they haven't given up, obviously that's, that's something that we study. Uh, but yet we're going to do what we need to do to, to have success and win the game. Does Mac still look as good as Mac has looked in the past? Uh, Christian? Oh, Cleo Mack. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. He's he's a good player, man. He he has still got really good rush skills. He's really good at setting the edge. They move him everywhere. It's hard to know where he's going to line up, left and right side. He's very productive on both sides. Still a very very good player and somebody you got to deal with. Someone like Elijah Mitchell, who had so much, so much success as a rookie. What's the conversation about integrating the best way possible after a trade for a Christian? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that conversation has been between he and Kyle and the running back coaches. I know I haven't had it with them. I think that most guys are, you know, they, they really just compete and they know that, you know, he, Elijah knows he has a role. Jeff, Jeff knew he had a role. I mean, you know, every guy has a role here. And if you play well and you pr and are productive, we're going to find a way to get you the football and get you in the game. Uh, it's a long season. We need everybody. So I don't think anybody feels pigeonholed or feels like, you know, oh, well, this was my job. Now it's his job. And it's, hey, man, it's a long year. A lot can happen. I think these guys are just working together. Uh, I think it's really cool to see how, 
you know, I think Christian talked about it with Jeff. It's the same now with, with, with Elijah coming back, is that how well these guys just help each other out and work together as teammates with the common goal to win. Yeah, everybody has individual goals of trying to, you know, be the starter and hit your bonuses and make money and do all that stuff. But I think at the end of the day, these guys all work really hard together to, to do what's best for the team and realizing that in the end, there'll, there'll be enough touches for everybody. I don't know how you, you judge the, the outside zone runs, but have they been as efficient this year as, as they've been in the past or as you want them to be? I think there's always room for improvement. I don't think it's been where we've needed to be. I think we've we've really missed some stuff. I don't think it's been as productive as it, as it should have been. I really think that we should be, you know, and again, I'm not saying, oh, we, 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 we're going to be the greatest. I'm, I'm really just saying that, that we've left some stuff out there. And part of it's been because the defense has done a good job, man. They've done a good job. They've defended us well. And, and we probably haven't executed as well as we need to. But there have been opportunities. There's been things that we've had, uh, whether it be the line, whether it be the runner, whether whatever it is, it, it, ha it hasn't played out quite to our liking, which is which is good. I mean, you know, we've had some success, but yet we've still got a lot of room to grow. And you can always point to things through the bye week, which we did, pulled some tape and said, hey, guys, look, this is why this isn't going. See how this is what we need to fix, and it's fixable. It's like, well, you know, we're just not very good at this stuff, or we're not very good at this position. That's not it. It's it's fixable things and things that, that I can do better as a coach uh, and presenting uh, opportunities for the players as well. Uh, Banks, first year as a start, as a full-time starter, and, and Burford as a rookie starter. How big was the bye week for those guys? Could you see that when they came back that they that they needed it? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, uh, I think Spencer was good for him. He got away, got home, which was good for him. You know, he came back refreshed and ready to go. I think those young guys really do need the break. I think Banksy probably a little bit better you know he went through it last year even though he wasn't playing I don't I didn't notice as much of a sigh of relief I did and Spencer's good Spencer really has been one of the better rookies as far as coming in doing the deal every day having a routine preparing but no matter what you say it is the second week in November and normally these guys are winding down to the end of their season these rookies and 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 this year they've still got this is the most we're, we're now just really starting our season to see where we end up at the end of this thing so uh but it was good for both those guys I think more probably Spencer than Aaron one more if you guys have it. Good. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it.